it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make another stand and pop card, but this is in the 6x6 size. So this has been requested by quite a few of you. I usually find that when I post a 5x7 card up, I then get requests for the 6x6 or vice versa. So I always try within pretty much most of the card designs that I've posted, you will find you know, two of the tutorials of that card, but in those two sizes. Um, and I will link this one into the 5x7 video and I'll link the 5x7 into this video. Um, and I'll also put in the title 5x7 and 6x6. So for anybody who hasn't seen what the card is yet, so I've been calling this the stand and pop. So it all folds flat and this will fit into your 6x6 envelope. And then when you open it, it all pops out and then you have this page on the back here, which is a great place for your sentiment, but also acts as a stand. It just gives it that support to stay in that right angle. I've fallen in love with this. These are my favorite kind of cards to make, the ones where I color stamped images. I just think this is adorable and it's using the brand new Daisy May collection, which I shared with you all earlier. Um, I've added lots of detail. I've used like my Posca pen to highlight the little white kind of spots there on the toadstools. I've used glossy accents on the bee and in the centre of the moth, butterfly, dragonfly, <laughs> on her wings. Just think it's a nice touch. And also on the windows there on that gorgeous little fairy house. I love it. I think it's the perfect card and, you know, depending on the colours you use and when I show you, well, if you've seen the collection that I shared there's also a little guy that you could have here and you could change a lot of the colors to more you know boy colors if we you know you've got to be careful what you say now than you but you know what I mean if you want to go down the route of making it more towards a boy then you can certainly do that and you can change this character here and I just absolutely love this style I really have fallen in love with it it's just got such a nice look to it it stands up perfectly um, and it, you know, just the way it all folds flat there. You'll notice if you've seen the five by seven, I've actually put two white strips here. I quite like that. I mean, you could, if you wanted to put pattern paper on the top as well, but in the other one that I'd done the five by seven, this was just plain colored cardstock, but I just, I don't know, just breaks it up a bit. And you could, you could put something like, I guess, um, open me or surprise or something. But the thing I like about this is it, as soon as it comes out the envelope, it kind of naturally starts to kind of want to come down. So that person who receives it will know what to do with this. You know, it's pretty, even if they pull it like this, you know, they're gonna know that it will stand up because it's got this piece here as well. And like I said, it's just, yeah, looks lovely. And I also finished it with some Nouveau drops there at the top, just for a little bit of dimension. So let me show you how to make this one. Okay, I'll pop that one just there. So I'm using the Dandelion Elf stamp set with the matching die, which is at the back. I've used actually quite a few in here. So that one there. So those two work together. And you can buy them separately, you don't have to buy them together. Then I've used the washing line, <laughs> love that. Just this one at the back here with the, the clothes on there, it's really cute. So I've used the die and there's, um, there's the stamp to go with that. And um, they also let me know, because I received my one, had two of these in, and apparently that's just something that's happened at the factories. So those ones are just gonna go out, I believe. Um, so if you get one of them, you're lucky, but you should only be getting one. So um, I think they said it's just easier just to do that. And then the next batch that comes through, we just have the one stamp set in. So then I have used, this is one of my favorites. It's just such a lovely die, um, a stamp and die. So there's the tree trunk, and it's the tree house stamp set. And then this is the one here, it's kind of a bit of a like a coordinate, you know, it's just like your add-on, I guess. So I used the bumblebee there and the, it's dragonfly, isn't it? Yeah, these two here, autumn leaves stamp set. And I've got a lovely card coming with more bits of this one. So that's all the, the items there. And as always, it's always shared below. So I have gone ahead and colored all this, but I'm gonna link in now while I'm just sorting this out, a quick video showing you how I started to color this one here. It's so, so lovely.
Okay, so this one is going to have a pink base card. So you want one piece that is eight by five and a half. And along the eight inch side, you want to score at five inches and seven inches, and then flip it over and score again at seven on the back. Flip it back over, and you're going to fold in the way that they want you to fold, i.e. how you've scored them. So you'll have a valley and then a mountain. So you'll have something like that. Okay. Then you will want this piece, which is going to go on the back, and this is six by five and a half. Okay, so that is going to stick right on there with a one inch overhang which will create the feet. So again, those of you that have just done the 5 by 7 and I've been loving the ones that you've been sharing on the group, by the way. Really, really lovely. I know many of you are enjoying it. So then for that pop-out piece, now we're doing this bit here. And this is a piece of five and a quarter by four and a half. Along the five and a quarter side, you want to score at a quarter of an inch, one and a quarter and four and a quarter. And again, you just want to fold all of those all so they're mountain folds, so they'll all be exactly the same, just normal, like so. That's going to stick like that. And then you want a little piece here, which is just a little support underneath, and this is three by one inch. And along the three inch side, you want to score at half an inch and two and a half, and just fold and burnish, so you've got something like that. And then this piece here is for the very front, and this is six by two. So this is actually the what gives you your full six inch width, because um, I like that that kind of, you can see, just overhangs slightly. And I think it just gives the card that shape, gives it that kind of tiered look. So that's those pieces. And then for your mats and layers, so for the very front piece, okay, no, sorry, yeah, this is for this piece here, so this is going to cover your main main part and this is a piece of white that is four and three quarters by five and a quarter and then you just drop down by quarter of an inch for the smaller ones so <laughs> why can't I think four and a half by five for the pattern there I've already stuck that on and then this is going to go on that very front piece just there and this is a piece of white that's five and three quarters by one and three quarters so it will then be five and a half by one and a half for the pattern that's going to go on there. This is for the back. I didn't decide because on the 5x7 I done two pieces in this side, I stuck in this size. I stuck one down and then folded this other one and stuck it on top. But you don't need it. That's it. You, you know, you can see there using it without, but you can certainly put some pattern paper on here. But one of these is going to be a sample, so I don't need to worry about stamping and doing all of the back detail because um, that never gets shown or seen. <laughs> but this is a piece of five and a quarter by five and seven eighths of an inch because this is going to go flush with the very bottom so you want a nice border around three sides along the five and a quarter you just want to score at two and five eighths and just fold and burnish and then this one here is going to stick on this one here so this is four and a quarter by two and three quarters so your pattern piece will be two and a half by four and then these are the two strips that I've got to go underneath, so it's optional, and that's three quarters of an inch by five and a quarter, so two of those. And then this one is to go on the top of this one here, so that's four and a quarter by three quarters. And then this one here is to go on the bottom of this piece. So they're all optional pieces, but I do think they help all of the kind of pop-out pieces pop because you see the blue or the colour that I've got against that white. I think it just helps it all stand out. So this is five and a quarter by, that's a funny size, one and five eighths. But that is a two inch piece. So it should be one and three quarters. Maybe that was a bit of scrap. <laughs> but yeah, so that's the sizes there. So I'm going to get rid of my scoreboard and we can start sticking this all down. So once you've got all your bits and pieces, it, you know, it's all pretty quick to put together. i actually done a lot of colouring. I've coloured lots of the collection all in kind of one go. And um, I said I was going to use brush pens, but I actually ended up going for my Arteza coloured pencils. And um, I don't know, I'm just really enjoying using the coloured pencils at the moment. And the one, those ones particularly are very creamy. And I just, I just get a really nice result with them, so I thought I'd use those. So I'm sticking it to that top piece there of that folded one. And then this one here, you just want to stick 
right over the top so it all lines up perfectly like so and then I'm going to stick this one onto the front here like so and then I've got that piece which is going to go in there okay and then I'm going to get this piece here and I'm going to stick that one over the top it's just a bit easier to stick it down you know whilst it's um, flat like so and then I'm also going to grab that smaller one and stick it on the top so the top is the one where you've got that little quarter inch tab okay and then I'm going to add glue all to the bottom of this one here and you're going to line up this edge here with the score line there so you want to make sure you've got it in the middle so you've got even overhang and just bring that up like so if you just fold it right over the whole thing's flat and you can see there I've got a nice even side so I know it's in the middle you just just make sure that you have got it you can you know because I'm using the liquid glue I can push it down you want to make sure it's right in that score line there so I'm just going to keep that like this fold this flap back over and whilst you've got it all laying flat it's quite nice to be able to stick all these other pieces down so you want to lay it down some glue just on this top piece here not on anything else so don't get it touching any of the card underneath and you're going to line up the bottom of this piece with the bottom of this and again make sure you've got an even overhang you should have a quarter of an inch hanging over each side because this is the base so and then I'm going to grab my other pattern piece here and stick this over the top and then I'm going to stick this down first and then you just kind of slide these in so it goes over the top of that. If you would rather stick these down now, you can do. It's, you know, it's not that much of a deal. You're not really going to notice, you know, whoever you give it to won't uh, notice that that shouldn't have been that, done that way. But I'm going to stick some glue onto each of my tabs, like so. And you're going to lay down this one so this, the folded side runs with the bottom of the card right in the middle. Again I'll just bring that up so you can see what I've done there, stuck that piece down so it runs nice and flush. This is the back of the card and the bottom and this is the front. And then if you fold it over flat, just lift that one up, it will lay down perfectly in line with the, the score line. Like so. And then I'm going to add some glue. Again, like I said, these are optional anyway but I just think it broke up all that pink and I'm just going to feed that one underneath there and stick that one down. Okay, so now you just pull that down and you'll see how everything has fallen into place. All you then need to do is pop some glue along this one and you want to fold this whole piece so it's flat against itself and then fold the card flat again. Okay, right, so while that's all there, I'm going to start putting things down. So this one, it was worked out perfectly as well because it fits nicely within that six inch width. So this is going to go right there. I love that green background. So I've already popped some foam tabs just along the, towards the bottom part because the top of it is going to overhang. So just make sure whatever you're, you know, sticking down, whether you're using your glue or you're using your pads, make sure it is all within you know it's on the surface of the cardstock because if you have anything sticky overhanging here or overhanging here when the card lies, line lies flat it's going to all stick and it won't open when you give it to that person so I can sit this one there and I know that the foam pads don't go over the top of this piece here that lovely it's such a great image oh I love it so now oh don't want to open that yet it's still gluing We'll leave that one just for a bit longer. Just while that's drying, I'm just going to stick this piece down. So just put some glue on one side and obviously if you want to stamp it beforehand, you can. And the bottom is going to lie completely flush. So you will then have a nice frame 
around here and if you were to open it right up you get that same border all the way around. So you can lie it flat that way in the envelope or you can close it that way, it's entirely up to you. I like to keep it this way because then I think people naturally go to then open it and see that it, you know, it also is a stand. So, and then bring this one back. You can just fold that one back that way just to make sure it's really secure. Okay, and now, that's got, a, I've got a lump there, there we go. <laughs> I need to sort that out. Okay, so it's just sticking down everything else. So this is my little clothesline. So again, I've already positioned all the foam pads so I know none of it's gonna um, overhang. So I'm laying this one down first because it's kind of like in the background-ish. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just so cute. So this one is gonna overhang. Did I overhang that bit as well? Yeah, I think I did. Obviously, whatever you do have overhanging, make sure it doesn't go past this here, um, this width, sorry, the six, the six inch width, because that obviously means it won't fit in your envelope. So that's that one. And then again, with her, I popped the uh, foam on. I hope you like the little colouring video as well that I posted up. Just a lot of people do ask, so I, I kind of film those just, um, you know, when I'm watching a movie and something, and then I just edit them in. So this one, I've got a bit of foam just behind her head. She's gonna go, she's gonna have to go in just a little bit of that wing. There we go. Like so. And then I've got Believe in Magic. So that one's going to go there. And then I've got my Dragonfly and the Bumblebee. And there you have it. Isn't it beautiful? So if you, you know, if you're someone that just sometimes just wants to spend a day colouring and stuff, if you kind of, you know, just sit down with all your stamped images one day and just colour and cut them all out and put them in a tray, and then you know look at card shapes and styles and then see, you know, how you can incorporate them into this. So what I want to do now is just add a few little extra touches. So I've got my glossy accents and I've got the Nouveau drops. The colour I've used is party pink. So first of all, I'm going to add little drops over the windows just so it kind of does look like it's glass I love using these and they do just really finish off all those little details so just there and also on her wings and I also done a little bit on her eyes just again just to make them look glass like and then on the body of the bumblebee and also the body of the dragonfly. In fact, I'll probably put it on the wings as well because they're clear, aren't they? Yeah, let's do it all on this one this time. You can always add it into other things that you may have done as well. So there we go. And then I'm going to finish with the Nouveau drops. Again, all completely optional. You might want to use some sequins. And whenever I use the Nouveau drops, let's grab a bit of scrap. Just make sure there's no air bubbles, see there is, you can hear it, and then you start to get the colour, because the last thing you want is, um, yeah, air bubbles and it splats everywhere, but you just want to, I always like to do little groups of like three, and do some real tiny ones there as well, hold it up a little bit just so I can see where they're going to be, a couple of bigger ones. I don't know, I just, I love all that extra detail. I mean, I could do some more down here and I think it adds to that kind of whimsical look. So I think it's, yeah, it's just a nice little touch. But like I said, with the Posca pen, if you do have any kind of details like this, so for example, can you see this tiny little, there should be like little dots really on those toadstools there, but because the, the stamping and the black is probably just filled it in, just um, use one of these. Give it a really good shake. I always like to test it before and just add a few little, see look, can you just see where I've just added those in, so see there they're all black by now. And it's just those extras I think 
help bring it together and when you add white it creates like a highlight and um, yeah, it's just just nice little details and that's what I did on those because with the red I kind of pretty much coloured over them um, but as soon as then you go back in with the white but can you see now that white detail just really brings it all to life and uh, yeah I really like it I love my Posca pen there you have it I'm not going to stand that one up because those Nuva drops are too big and they will drop down but again just bringing that one in there it's just so pretty so so cute and I just love that it all folds you know nice and flat ready to be um, given to someone and it's just got such a nice profile it it does stand I always test my cards on the mantle I always put them there stand back think yep yeah, do they look good and these I thought did I thought they had a lovely lovely um, presence and they would definitely stand out from the other cards from the shops <laughs> so I hope you enjoy the 6x6 version I'm a little bit in love with this stamp collection Daisy May stamps are awesome and they are super cute so I hope you've enjoyed this card inspiration and um, as always all the links will be shared below and I'll be back very soon with another tutorial see you then bye